If Lilies are serious about Lisa being an outstanding soloist, then they need to stop overhyping nonsense and demand authentic music from her. K-pop 2024 is competing with K-pop 2023 for being the most boring and awful year for K-pop, with stands acting like super morons, some companies being clueless about quality music, no new ideas being introduced, and Min Heejin plus New Jeans parents being big piles of feces. Hello again Rosieries, and to all the newcomers of this channel. I hope you all will enjoy this video and stick with me in the future. As usual I have more opinions to share, so let's get into it. More importantly, please do fucking snowflakes need to chill. If Lilies are serious about Lisa being an outstanding soloist, then they need to stop overhyping nonsense and demand authentic music from her. They need to stop getting angry when people are rightfully criticizing her music because criticism is there for her to improve her sound, not to hate. Look, Lisa's got mad potential, and we all know she's got the charisma to light up any stage. But if her fans keep treating her like she can do no wrong, she's never going to push her boundaries. It's cool to be supportive, but when you start defending every single thing she puts out without acknowledging the flaws, you're doing her a disservice. Constructive criticism is a good thing. It's what helps artists grow and evolve. Think about it, some of the best artists out there face tons of critique before they hit their stride. Lisa's no different. She's got to experiment, make mistakes, and learn from them. If her fans just keep showering her with blind praise, she might miss out on valuable lessons. So, instead of getting defensive, let's start demanding more from her. Let's push her to explore new sounds, take risks, and really show us what she's made of. She's got the talent. Now let's give her the space to truly shine. Oh, one last thing, she needs to ditch the egotistic and narcissistic style that has been overdone. Give us real music, please. What I don't understand is that Lisa has a beautiful culture but rarely shows it. She's too obsessed with black culture. It would have been cool if she could involve more Thai elements into her music videos as well as her music, and showing Bangkok is not a proper representation of her culture. Imagine how unique and refreshing it would be if Lisa tapped into her Thai heritage more often. Incorporating traditional Thai instruments like the Kim or Renat into her songs could create a really distinctive sound that stands out in the K-pop scene. And visually, there's so much to draw from. Traditional Thai dance with its graceful movements and intricate costumes could add a whole new dimension to her performances. Even simple things like featuring Thai landscapes, festivals, or folklore in her music videos would not only honor her roots, but also introduce her culture to a global audience. For example, showcasing the beauty of Thai temples, floating markets, or even traditional Thai festivals like Songkran could add depth and richness to her visual storytelling. Lisa's got a massive platform and a diverse fan base. It'd be amazing to see her use that to highlight where she comes from. Plus, it'd set her apart from the sea of artists who all seem to be drawing from the same influences. She's already a trailblazer in so many ways, bringing more of her Thai identity into her art could be the next big step in her evolution as an artist. I don't understand why people are saying things like the downfall of La Seraphim. Sure, this has got to be the rockiest year for them. They've received a ton of hate for their vocals, performances, music, and all those controversies. But most of that hate is because of the company's incompetence and dumb decisions. I mean not giving them proper vocal lessons, setting them up for failure by letting them perform at Coachella way too early, and don't get me started on the terrible PR moves. It's no wonder they got so much backlash. But let's be real here. It's not like they can't bounce back. Every group has their ups and downs, especially in their early years. Years. The key is how they handle these challenges and grow from them. Look at other groups who faced criticism and still made it big. They used those experiences to improve and come back stronger. La Seraphim has the talent and potential, they just need the right support and direction. If the company steps up its game, gives them proper training and makes smarter decisions, there's no reason why they can't turn things around. Plus, they've already got a solid fan base that believes in them. With some patience and
and hard work, they can definitely overcome this rough patch and shine even brighter. So let's cut them some slack and see how they evolve. Whether you like the song or you don't, it doesn't make sense for some stands to talk negatively about a song, then give it a 7 to 9 out of 10. That makes no sense. It comes off as disingenuous, as they're either too afraid because it would piss other stands off or they enjoy lying to themselves to support their bias. Just be real about your feelings about a song. If nobody can accept that, then that's their problem, not yours. Let's be honest here, if a song isn't hitting the mark for you, it's okay to say so. It's natural to want to support your favorite idols, but being honest about their music doesn't mean you love them any less. In fact, being upfront can actually help them grow. Constructive criticism is way more valuable than fake praise, and seriously, what's the point of sugarcoating your opinion? If you didn't vibe with the track, giving it a high score just to keep the peace is pretty pointless. Fans need to start trusting their own taste and being confident in their opinions. If someone can't handle your honest thoughts, that's on them, not you. We're all here because we love the music and the idols, but that doesn't mean we have to love every single song. At the end of the day, being genuine in your feedback is a sign of respect for the artists. It shows that you're engaged and care enough to want them to improve, so next time a song drops, just keep it real. Your honest opinion might just be what helps your faves level up. I can't believe that we live in a world where freedom of speech is a thing, and people still allow others to influence their thoughts for the wrong reasons. I didn't know listening to K-pop automatically makes someone lack common sense or critical thinking to make rash decisions in attacking idols in hopes it would make their faves look better. Take Elit and Kukulit, for example. Just because this stupid K-tube farm say something negative and also invalid about them, it doesn't mean we should blindly follow. These groups have their unique charm and talent, and it's up to us to form our own opinions. Instead, we see a wave of unnecessary hate just because someone decided to stir the pot. It's ridiculous how quickly people jump on the bandwagon without even giving these groups a fair chance. Look at Minhejun, La Seraphim, and Elit. They've faced their share of controversies, and sure the companies have made some questionable decisions. But that doesn't mean we should completely write off the idols who are working hard to entertain us just because of a manipulative bitch. The girls deserve a chance to prove themselves, and the hate they get sometimes stems from either from the company's actions or an evil CEO or a loud mouth rather than their own. Let's use our critical thinking skills and not let these mongrels dictate how we feel about these idols. Just because someone in power or a loud voice in the community says something doesn't make it gospel. We need to support our faves with genuine love and stop tearing down others just to prop up our biases. At the end of the day, we're all here for the music and the incredible talent these idols bring to the table. Let's keep it real and support them for the right reasons, not because someone told us to think a certain way. Similar to television series, K-pop groups could create albums that follow a continuous story arc. Music videos and performances could build on the storyline in each song, creating a serialized experience for fans. This would be such a game-changer. Imagine being invested not just in the music, but in an ongoing saga that unfolds with each new release. Each comeback would feel like a new episode dropping. Fans would be buzzing with theories and dissecting every little detail to figure out what happens next in the story. It would add a whole new layer of engagement and excitement. Plus, it gives idols a chance to really showcase their act chops and creative versatility. We've seen hints of this with groups like BTS and their HYYH series or EXO's superpower concept, but I'm talking about taking it to the next level. Imagine a fantasy-themed album where each song tells a different part of the hero's journey, complete with epic music videos and intricate choreography that brings the story to life. This could also be an opportunity for more creative collaborations. Directors, writers, and even other artists could contribute to building this expansive world. It could lead to some really innovative and memorable projects that stand out in the crowded K-pop landscape. Not to mention, it would give fans something to hold on to for longer. Instead of moving on to the next big thing, they'd be more invested in following the group's journey. And honestly, who doesn't love a good story? It's time for K-pop to embrace this concept and give us the story arc albums we deserve. Each album release could be integrated into immersive video games developed by K-pop companies. Game levels would unlock new songs, concept art, and behind-the-scenes content, gamifying album releases. 
Imagine navigating through any type of world where completing quests reveals new tracks and exclusive content. This could totally change how we experience music. It's like combining the best of both worlds, gaming and music. Fans would be more engaged, exploring different levels and eagerly waiting to unlock the next song. Plus, it's a great way to keep the excitement going long after the album drops. This approach could also add a new dimension to fan interaction. Players could compete for high scores or collaborate on in-game challenges, creating a community within the game, it's not just about listening to music anymore, it's about diving into an entire world built around the album. The problem with Cat's Eye's debut is that it just exists. There's nothing exciting about the song, and it's extremely lackluster and unpolished. The song could have been saved if it had a captivating pre-chorus and bridge, which could have enhanced it, but no, companies chose to be lazy and push out two-minute songs like they're running a marathon. Debuts are getting way less interesting, and companies are getting way too lazy. It's frustrating because the potential is there. The members are talented, but the material they're given just doesn't do them justice. The production feels rushed, and the song doesn't leave a lasting impression. Remember when debuts were a big deal and everyone was talking about them for weeks? Now it feels like they're just another release on the schedule. I will say that I'm grateful that another global girl group exists, as I've always wanted it to happen ever since I started my channel back in 2021, my old channel. It's great to see diversity and new faces in the industry, but I just wish companies would take the time and figure out what sound would suit them best before debuting them. I thought the song would grow on me. I gave it three weeks, and I still don't like it. It's disappointing because debuts should be memorable and exciting. They should make you want to follow the group's journey and see what they come up with next. But with Cat's Eye's debut, it's like, okay, what's next? Also Touch suffers the same fate as their debut. I really hope that future releases will be better, and that companies will put more effort into making debuts a big deal again. The industry needs fresh and exciting content, not just more of the same. It's getting exhausting seeing idols making headlines thinking they did something really bad only to find out that they are either dating, or wearing shorts, or smoked. I'm tired of stands getting upset over nothing, wasting people's time complaining about stuff that people do on a regular basis. Seriously, these internet trolls are a waste of space. Like, can we just take a step back and realize how ridiculous this is? Idols are human beings too. They deserve to date, dress comfortably, and make personal choices without being scrutinized by the public eye. It's like some fans forget that their idols are real people with real lives outside of their celebrity persona. The outrage over trivial things is just blown out of proportion. It's as if some fans are looking for any reason to be offended or upset. This kind of toxic behavior doesn't do anyone any good. It puts unnecessary pressure on idols and creates a hostile environment for everyone involved. We need to stop wasting energy on these non issues and focus on what truly matters, like supporting our idols' music and career achievements. Let's allow idols to live their lives without the constant fear of backlash over mundane, everyday actions. It's time to grow up and let them be human. I'm not saying that IVE needs complex choreographies to be exciting because look at Blackpink, their choreographies were super easy yet exciting to watch at the same time. I know I complain about their choreos a lot and call me hypocritical. But I did enjoy BP's choreographies. The issue with IVE's choreographies isn't necessarily about complexity. It's about engagement. Whether it's the members or the choreographer, something isn't clicking. There's a lack of energy and creativity that makes their performances feel repetitive and un inspired. It's like they're just going through the motions without any real spark or flair. I don't know if it's a matter of the choreographer not giving them routines that suit their strengths, or if the members aren't connecting with the choreography in a way that makes it come alive. Whatever it is, it's not working. When you see a performance, you want to feel excited and captivated. And unfortunately, that's not happening with IVE right now. This can result in some fans getting bored watching them, which is the last thing any group wants. Performances should be a highlight. Some something that keeps fans engaged and looking forward to more. IVE has so much potential and talent, but it needs to be showcased in a way that's fun and dynamic. They deserve choreographies that bring out the best in them and keep the audience on the edge of their seats.
Eugene's parents are the definition of narcissistic, irresponsible, ignorant, greedy brats who complain about every little thing, and they're getting annoying. Just to show you how brain-dead they are, they have publicly criticized Hybe for poor treatment and harassment of their daughters during their trainee days at Source Music and their current efforts to undermine Adore, New Jean's current label led by Min Hee Jin. Minji's mother highlighted the terrible living conditions, including cockroach-infested dorms and late-night commutes and pressure to quit school. She emphasized Min Hee Jin's commitment to the trainees. Haiyan and Heron's mothers shared frustrations over being misrepresented as traitors and confirmed their support for Adore. Danielle's mother criticized Hybe's unprofessional release of private information. The parents collectively called for an end to Hybe's false narratives and harassment, expressing satisfaction with Adore and Min Hee Jin's leadership. First of all, if this is true, then these bimbos are the ones to blame. They allowed their daughters to tolerate those living conditions in the first place because of greed and wanting them to become idols. They chose to rob their children of their childhood to train. It was their choice, and no one forced them. It's common knowledge that trainees go through this on a daily basis. So why did New Jeans parents think that New Jeans would be an exception? I'm not saying that the company is in the right. However, New Jeans parents are too irresponsible. And funny how they decided to talk about this now during the Hai Min Hee Jin fiasco. They are really pretentious, and they're making it easier for some stands to despise them. Moral of the story. Leave children out of the entertainment industry. Additionally, where was this energy when Min Hee Jin allowed a bunch of toddlers to sing Come and Take a Looky, Take It, Don't Break It, I Wanna See You Taste It, Keep Looking at My Cookie, If You Want It, You Can Get It, If You Want It, and all the other nasty lyrics in Cookie, the hypocrisy is loud. At the end of the day, we don't really know if this is true or not because Min Hee Jin is super manipulative and will say anything about Hybe to paint herself as the hero. That's someone everyone should stay away from. But let me know what you guys think about this. I'm already tired and ready to end this video. You guys know the drill, share your thoughts in the comments and please be respectful. Don't get too worked up, they are just opinions, let's just have fun. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time, bye 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 bye.